you could become a computer scientist without learning mathematics, just as you could swim across the Pacific Ocean. But just as it's easier to cross the Pacific Ocean in a ship, it's easier to become a computer scientist with mathematics. This means you'll need to do proofs. The value of proof in mathematics is often misunderstood. Nobody ever tries to prove something they believe false. So why bother with proofs? It's because proving a theorem reviews what we know about the objects, reveals things we might not have known before, and raises new questions. The first part is useful when you're studying a subject. The second part can give us new insights. And the third part is what drives original research in the subject. Let's prove that all languages that consist of a single string of finite length are regular. So again, definitions are the whole of mathematics. All else is commentary. We pull in our definition and we see that, yes, all languages that consist of a single string are regular. And so this statement follows from the definition. Or does it? Remember, if you don't find your mistakes, someone else will. To see why this isn't true, remember, concrete never hurts. So if L consists of a single symbol, then L is regular by definition. But that's not what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that if L consists of a single string, and the problem is if L is a string, strings are not symbols, so definition doesn't help. So let's take a closer look. Our claim is actually an ordered but infinite list of claims. If L consists of a single string of length 1, it's regular. If L consists of a single string of length 2, it's regular. If L consists of a single string of length, wait for it, 3, it's regular. Now this observation is important because any time we have an ordered but infinite list of claims, we should consider an induction proof. Now, actually, computer scientists prefer to start indexing with zero, so our claim should probably be if L consists of a single string of length zero, it's regular, and so on. And since we're starting at zero, we still have an ordered but infinite list, so induction is still a viable option. So for an induction proof, we want to first prove the base case, the statement is true for some starting point, then prove that if the statement is true for n equals k, then it is true for n equals k plus 1. In this case, we want to prove two things. Our base case, languages consisting of a string of length 0 are regular, and then our induction step, if languages consisting of a string of length k are regular, then languages consisting of a string of length k plus 1 are regular. So, let's consider. If L consists of a string of length 0, the only string of length 0 is the empty string, so our language must be just the empty string. But by definition, L is regular. And so we've proved the base step. Next, we want to prove the induction step. If languages consisting of a single string of length k are regular, then languages consisting of a single string of length k plus 1 are regular. Now we're trying to prove an if-then statement, in other words a conditional. So it's useful to keep in mind that whenever you're trying to prove a conditional, you can always assume the antecedent. In other words, we can always assume this if portion and take that as our starting point. So let's begin by assuming that languages that consist of a single string of length n equals k are regular. And now let's let L prime be a language that consists of a single string of length k plus 1. We can describe L prime as a concatenation of two languages where L1 is a language consisting of a single string of length n equals k, and L2 is a language consisting of a single string of length 1.
Now L1 is regular by our induction hypothesis. That's the starting point that we're allowed to assume. L2, because it consists of a single string of length 1, is also regular by definition. So the concatenation L1, L2 is also regular by definition, and consequently L prime is regular. And remember, it never hurts to summarize. So we've proved all languages consisting of a string of length n equals 0 are regular, and if all languages consisting of a string of length n equals k are regular, then all languages consisting of a string of length n equals k plus 1 are regular. And so what does this mean? First, all languages consisting of a string of length n equals 0 are regular. That's our step 1. And since all languages consisting of a string of length n equals 0 are regular, then all languages consisting of a string of length n equals 0 plus 1, 1, are regular. But since all languages consisting of a string of length n equals 1 are regular, then all languages consisting of a string of length n equals 1 plus 1, 2 are regular. That's step 2 again. And so all languages consisting of a string of length 2 plus 1, 3 are regular. That's step 3. And so on. Consequently, all languages consisting of a single string of finite length are regular. Well, let's go a little further. Let's prove that all languages consisting of a finite number of strings, each of finite length, are regular. We can restate this as an ordered but infinite list of statements. Remember, we like to start with zero, so our ordered but infinite list should be all languages consisting of zero strings are regular, all languages consisting of one string are regular, and so on. Since this is an ordered infinite list, we should consider a proof by induction. So we'll start with our base step. Suppose L has zero strings. So L is the empty language, which is regular by definition. And note the distinction between containing zero strings, which gives us the empty language, and a string of length zero, which is a language that does contain a string, the empty string. Next, Suppose that all languages with n equals k strings are regular, and let L prime be a language with n equals k plus 1 string. This will be the union of a language L1 with n equals k strings, with a language L2 with 1 string. But we proved earlier that all languages with 1 string are regular, and by our induction hypothesis, all languages with n equals k strings are regular. And so the union of two regular languages is a regular language. And again, it never hurts to summarize. We prove that all languages consisting of zero strings are regular from our definition. And we also prove that if all languages consisting of n equals k strings are regular, then all languages consisting of n equals k plus 1 strings are also regular. Since all languages consisting of n equals 0 strings are regular, that's step 1, then all languages consisting of 0 plus 1, 1 string are regular, that's step 2. So all languages consisting of 1 plus 1, 2 strings are regular, step 2 again. So all languages consisting of n equals 2 plus 1, 3 strings are regular, and so on, which gives us our theorem. All languages consisting of a finite number of strings each of finite length are regular.